Sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, grace and peace to you from the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. There seems to be something about Jericho and God generously helping the blind to see. You see, Jesus healing Bartimaeus is not the first time the blind were given sight at Jericho. In fact, 1,500 years earlier, the Israelites experienced an equally eye-opening experience themselves. Having been rescued from their bondage in Egypt, the Israelites fled into the wilderness, led by, by God to Mount Sinai, where God generously promised to restore their fortunes by giving them the land that God had first promised to their ancestor, Abraham. Satisfied, the people then picked up and began to move on towards the promised land. Now, when they reached the borders, they sent in spies to, to check it all out. And after a couple of months, the spies reported back that it was, in fact, a land of milk and honey, a land overflowing with abundance. But it was also a land filled with lots of people in large cities with even bigger walls. So when the people heard this, they despaired. Even Moses and Aaron threw themselves down in the dust, giving in to the people's hopelessness. However, not everyone despaired. Among the spies were two young men, Joshua and Caleb, who asked, why are you lying down despairing? Take heart, get up, God is calling us, God is with us. But the people responded, what are you, blind? There are giants in there, we'll never win. Joshua and Caleb were anything but blind. Seeing is believing, as they say. And as spies, they saw the large cities and even bigger walls. But believing is seeing with the eyes of God. They had faith in God's generosity and knew that God would give them victory. But the Israelites didn't. And so they wandered around in the wilderness, so close to seeing the promised land, and yet so far because of their spiritual blindness. But after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, it was ripe to try again. Moses had died, and so Joshua led the people into the promised land, not because they believed that God was with them, mind you, but because Joshua was the leader and he said so. And so they came to their first city, Jericho, which they marched around six times for six days. And on the seventh day, they shouted out, and the walls came tumbling down. And not just Jericho's, but the Israelites as well. God stripped away their walls, their blinders, to what God can do. And they were healed. They saw once again with the eyes of faith that God was with them in all his generosity. This was, of course, not the only time that the walls, the blinders at Jericho, fell with a shout. Bartimaeus may have been a blind beggar, but in truth, he was not blind. With eyes of faith, he saw in Jesus what others did not. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, he shouted. Bartimaeus was the first person to see that Jesus was the promised heir of King David. The spiritually blind crowd rebuked Bartimaeus. He's a rabbi, not a king. What, are you blind? Don't answer that. <laughs> So Barmaeus shouted all the louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. Stopping, Jesus called for Barmaeus. And the crowd, like an echo from the past, said, Take heart, get up, he is calling for you. Drawn to the last place where he heard Jesus' voice, Barmaeus threw off his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus, who asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Now, Honestly, that sounds like a pretty silly question to me. I mean, what does Jesus think he wants? A nice back rub? A pair of sunglasses? Of course not. He wanted to get his sight back. But then again, maybe that's just it. Jesus wanted to see just how generous this Israelite believed God could be. Rabbi, he said, let me see again. 
Believing is seeing, and Bartimaeus believed God could be awfully generous. Go, replied Jesus, your faith has made you well. And immediately the walls of Jericho fell once again. Bartimaeus regained his physical sight, and he became a disciple. And the crowd, well, they had an eye-opening experience as well. It was no accident that the crowd proclaimed Jesus king when he entered Jerusalem triumphantly the next day. Because of a blind man, their blinders came off, and they saw Jesus more clearly as well. Of course, this is what we want, too. We want this story to be our story, to encounter Jesus, to, have, to be called by him by name, to find the words to tell our deepest desires, and to be healed, made whole. This is what we want, isn't it? To trade in whatever blindness it is that each of us has, to trade it in for sight so that we can see, see ourselves, see our world, see Jesus clearly, without blinders or walls. This is what we want, isn't it? The courage to see, to really live by faith. I can't help but wonder, having followed Jesus to Jerusalem, did Bartimaeus have any regrets? Oh, sure, he got to see the great fanfare at, at Jesus' procession into Jerusalem, the cleansing of the temple, and all the celebrations going on because of the festivities of Passover. It was a wondrous vision and a delight to behold. But was he prepared to see his anguishing king grabbed in the night like a brigand and how the priest beat him and humiliated him? Was he prepared to see the bloodied mess that the Roman scourging made Jesus? Or did he have to turn away and close his eyes? Was he prepared to watch his king be crucified in such a gruesome estate or would he have preferred to have never, or would he have preferred to have stayed blind, never having had the image seared into his memory? It's true, isn't it? It's easy for us to accept the beautiful, the splendor of seeing the effect of, of God's generosity on people's lives, of seeing the faces of people light up when the gospel sinks in, of seeing tears of joy people shed along with their guilt they've carried around for years because their eyes have been open to the truth that there is no sin so great that God cannot forgive. But if one is going to see, really see, that means seeing the ugly as well, seeing the ugly effect of sin that one didn't see before, the pettiness, the blaming, the lying, the oppression, the hypocrisy, the fear, the brokenness of humanity. It's too depressing, you say. Makes you want to crawl back into bed and pull the covers up over your head in despair. Lie down. Take heart. Get up. He is calling you. What will you do? What will any of us do? As Pastor Barbara Brown Taylor put it, you can stay where you are with what you know, or you can shout out, spring up, and ask for your heart's desire. Damn the torpedoes and good riddance to caution, to propriety, to the fear that keeps you in your dark, a prisoner to your walls and blinders. So, do you want to see? And if you do, are you willing to see everything there is, the good along with the awful, the beautiful along with the monstrous, the generosity along with the meanness in yourself? in everyone you meet, in the world. If so, then go on your way, because your faith has made you well. Go your way, as if seeing for the first time, or if having gained your sight, your own way doesn't look so good or appealing anymore, then try another way. It leads to Jerusalem, through a garden, up a hill, past a cross, to an empty tomb. It's not always scenic, but wait until you see what there is at the end. Or should I say, who? What? You didn't know that God is with you? Take heart. Get up. God is calling you. Amen. Amen.